Hi, today I'm going to show you how to use vector databases with the LangChain library in combination with FastAPI. We'll explore why this integration is not just beneficial, but essential, especially as REC applications grow more sophisticated. Advanced REC applications demand more than just a script for inserting documents into a vector store. It calls for an abstraction layer between the script and the database, ensuring a more robust and scalable system. This is where the synergy of vector databases, LangChain and FastAPI comes into play. By using these tools together, we can create a more efficient and secure approach. Before we jump into the code, I'm gonna show you the biggest mistakes in the indexing process with vector databases. The biggest one is not to use an API at all. When you don't use an API, you don't have a standardized interface of how the vector database expects the data. An API makes this much easier. You can also use the API as security layer between a client and the database if you use authentication. When working with APIs in Python, it's important to know about asynchronous programming. In many code bases I have seen, the code is blocking code. Finally, LangChain also recognizes this issue and provides a built-in solution for this. The last issue is more about efficiency of resources. So when updating a vector store when a document changes, you don't want to delete and create a new index every time. The indexing API is a good first step to this, but in my opinion, it's not robust enough yet. I can't provide a solution since this is quite difficult and the solution could also vary from vector database to vector database. But I'm gonna show you an idea of how I think it might be solved and how an API is part of the solution. I will show you an example with fast API and PG vector, which is my personal favorite. Now let's jump into the code. Okay, I'm in VS Code and as you can see, I've got a Docker Compose YAML file, which is there to set up the vector store. So I can just run docker compose up and this will now create an instance of PG vector. So let's run docker ps and as we can see this image is running. So now we can communicate with PG vector. Now we can install all of the dependencies with pip install requirements.txt. So there we install langchain, fast API, PG vector and so on. And now let's have a look at our main.py. Let's scroll up to the top. And here we can see we use fast API, we use LangChain and so on and so on. And we also import some models and other files and classes I created in other files. So just a little walk through this code. So first we create an app instance. So this is now our fast API entry point. We check for environment variables, which we have to use to, for example, to create a connection string to PG vector. So we need a user, a password, DB port, and also the uh, Postgres database name, which is all stored in the .env file. In this file, there's also an OpenAI API key. And then we also check if we start this application in async mode or if we use it in synchronous mode. Based on that mode, we run the function get vector store. So this is an async vector store or a synchronous vector store. I'm gonna show you that implementation in detail in a few seconds. We create a retriever from that, which we use then to chat over documents, which we can in, uh, insert via the API. So next is the endpoint. So the first endpoint is at documents. This is where we can pass a list of documents which follow a specific document model. So this is the document model. So this follows the approach of the LangChain document, which also has got page content and a metadata dictionary. But we also add a function called generate digest, where we check if the page content of the document has changed. And if that's the case, we want to update the document in the vector store. Otherwise, we don't want to update that. So that's a first approach, but I'm gonna show you that in detail. So let's go back to the main. And as you can see, now we add this list of documents. We create a list of LangChain documents from that. So we just iterate over the page content and the metadata and create this list of documents. And now we run add documents or a add documents. This is the async version, this is the synchronous version. So it depends which class we use. The next endpoint is for getting all of the IDs in the vector store. So this is a custom implementation um, for async pg vector and also extended pg vector with which both inherit from the normal pg vector class but add some functionality then we got get documents by ids so this is the first step we get all of the ids and pass these ids to this endpoint and now we get back all of the documents again the concrete implementation depends on async pg vector or the other class 
The next endpoint is about deleting documents. So this endpoint expects a list of IDs. So first we run this to get the IDs, then we take the IDs we want to delete and pass it to this endpoint. So this now deletes all of the documents in our vector store. Again, it depends on the concrete implementation of our vector store, which method we call. But after that, we don't have these documents in our vector store. The last endpoint is just a chat endpoint, which makes use of the chain we created a little bit earlier, which makes use of our vector store, where we take in the retriever and also a question and create a final answer. So this is the actual endpoint for the user. This is for the admins of our application. So before we have a look at the other modules, we just gonna run the API and I'm gonna demonstrate you what happens. So we run pip install uvi corn to install the server which runs the API. And we run the app with uvcorn main app and we run it on port 8000. So these are the five endpoints. We can add documents, get all IDs of all documents. We can get documents by all of the IDs we get here. We can delete documents and we can use the chat endpoint. So let's first create a new document like this. So we can uh, do it like this. Uh, book costs 20 euros and we don't add any metadata. So let's add these documents. As you can see, this works. And now we can get all of the IDs. So this is very slow because I added some fake uh, timer to make this API slower than it normally is because I want to demonstrate the way async works. So this is our ID and we can just copy that and get the documents here. So let's add this. Now we get the single document back. Again, this takes five seconds because I made this API endpoint slow. So here a book costs 20 bucks and the metadata now includes this digest. So this is what we created when we added the document to our vector store. This is in uh, this class document model. And here we've got this generate digest. So we only want to change a document in the vector store if the hash of that page content property changes. Otherwise we don't want to embed the document because this is expensive and kind of slow. So with this approach, we can change the vectors inside our vector store more granularly. So to be honest, I'm currently not sure how to do this with any other vector store than PG vector, since most other vector stores appear like black boxes. And that's why a Langchain also uses a SQL based record manager to track documents. I got no robust solution for this, but this is something you want to be aware of when indexing large amounts of documents, deleting and recreating the index is normally pretty bad. Now let's go to the next mistake. And this is where we explore extended PG vector and async PG vector. So I got a class which inherits from the normal PG vector class, but I added some methods like get all IDs. Here I query the embedding store table. This is the custom table, which is used by PG vector to uh, embed the documents and here I just get all of the documents. But as you can see, I added a time sleep with five seconds to make the application slower to demonstrate that this code, which we got here, which is blocking codes, so we have def, not async def, makes the application very slow. For the other class, async pg vector, we have the same methods, but we use an async def. So this is asynchronous code. The difference here is that we not just run get all IDs or get document by IDs but we use the run in executor method. This is relatively new from Langchain. And I think Langchain got the point that in production, you need some kind of asynchronous code. Uh, the solution was by Langchain to use async IO and run the get running loop method and then puts everything in a thread pull executor. So we've got multi-threading here, which is a nice workaround when you don't have access to native uh, async code. And this way, this code does not block. What I actually mean with this, I'm going to show you by example. So I created this little my request file. First, we're going to stop the application and add this to false or set it to false. So this time we start the code with the extended pg vector class. 
And now let's open another terminal. And now we want to make a request to this API. Let's change the port to port 8000. So we use HTTPX, which has got an async client where we can run asynchronous code. So what we're gonna do here is we first make a request to get all IDs and then to chat. So again, in the store.py, we can see this is our method, get all IDs, this is blocking code, and this is non-blocking code. So in the request.py, we now run that code three times. So we run Python and then my request.py. And now we can see that this now blocks our chat endpoint. So we get the response from get all IDs and then from chat. And then again, we get the response from get all IDs and then from chat. And in the last iteration, the same again. So this is the behavior if the code is blocking. So let's now go back to the end file, set this to true, and now run the code again. Here we can see now async is used. So let's go back to the terminal and run that code again. So Python my request.py, and now we should see a difference in this execution. As you can see, now we get the response. So this is because now the thread is not blocked. So first, when we block the thread, then the chat endpoint is allowed to be executed. And again, it does not block the chat endpoint. So this is the behavior you want. You don't want your current main thread to be blocked by different endpoints. Okay, that's it. So if you want to go to production with your LangChain application, use an API. Don't re-index your documents every time documents changes and always use asynchronous code. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye-bye.